So Christ is using a parable to communicate a truth. So I'm asking you, what truth about Allah's light is communicated by comparing it to an olive? So, so I'm going to explain his point and then I'm going to answer his point. Yeah. But, but try and listen. Now notice he's lost all control now. He's lost all self-control. Lost all self-control. He's lost all sinful control. Right? So now, bro, you wanted to, you asked a question, you're not going to listen to the answer. So, the point, the point. All right, thank you very much, mate. So the point that we're talking about. All right, thank you. The point that we're talking about is that this brother is trying to argue that the New brother. Testament doesn't teach doesn't teach that salvation is for the whole of the world. I'm going to invite you for and I've just shown... I'm going to invite will you, you stop interrupting? Robert, Please stop being rude. And stop being rude. Sit together, so, and we so have a nice he's lost all self-control. So, area, right? the passage that I showed him yeah. was that our vision of heaven includes the whole of humanity. And then he quoted a passage that talks about a specific group. And what he didn't realize is that the passage he quoted is a subcategory of a larger group that I was demonstrating. And the subcategory that I quoted is this one in Revelations 5, 9 to 10. Listen, you are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals. For you were slaughtered and for your blood you ransomed for God saints from every tribe and language and people and nation now does that include the world or not yes, there you go you see this is a guy with a brain yeah. that guy not thinking he's just repeating a script now i want to talk to you about something separate topic new topic the topic the topic Bob <laughs> what was your good name? Bob What's your good name? Bob Bob honestly I would invite you for a cup of tea. Thank you, let's do that. Great. But honestly, and we have a proper proper debate. Which book which actually give you salvation? The Bible or this book? Great. You have no let's do that. Let's do that. Fantastic. So here's here's the question that I want to ask you. Okay? In the Quran, in Surah 24. By the way, disclaimer, I may not have the answer to this, so... Fine, fine. You know and I know that Allah can't be compared to anything in his creation, agreed? Do we all agree he's... Well, it's just, just say it for the... Yes or no? Can Allah be compared to his creation? It depends, it depends. Depends on what? Because uh, the attributes of Allah... Yeah. Uh, you hold it. The attributes of Allah can be found in the world again. That's fine. But the essence of God can't be compared to anything. He'll help. Oh, sure. So, yeah, for example, a Rahman, a Rahim. Not Rahim, but Rahman, for example. Yep. Yep. Someone can be merciful. Yep. Uh, someone can be just, you know. Yep. So, you, in that sense, you can, you can compare you, mirroring God in that sense. So, is, are you saying that what we can think of or imagine is like Allah? No, you... No. Every, any, anything... Abu Bakr says, anything that you think Allah is, Allah is not. Did you hear that? Anything you think Allah is, Allah is not. But what is it though? That right. it, it, no, 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 but it's very nuanced. Okay, so... You so, have to ask me, what do you mean so, by that? No, I don't. Well, then you don't, don't understand. I don't need to ask that question. No, but then you, you don't, don't understand. You don't need to dictate my questions. No, because you know why? Because you're going to make a grave mistake now. So you can correct me. So you can correct me. Well, you have okay. just said... That what you think Allah is, He is not. Yeah, but what, that, said, what, does what does that mean? What does that mean? And when I said, no, what I does said, that mean? What do you understand by that? What, shall we do this interrupting shouting thing? No, we have a conversation. We, right, so, no, no, so we have a conversation. So I'm asking you. I made a statement. To, if we're going to do a conversation. No, but you're right, controlling. Let's time it. Time it. You're controlling the conversation. Let's time it. We're going to time it. You're controlling the conversation. I'm going to give you control. I'm going to give you three minutes. I'm asking you. Okay. Since you asked me a question, you can explain it. There you go. Okay. When you're ready, please ask me a question. Are you ready? No, he's not ready yet. When you're ready, you explain it. This is too formal. But three, three minutes. Got it. Since, I've, uh, since you've asked me, I've asked you, what do you understand by that statement? You've got three minutes. Yeah, what do you understand so by that statement? It. No, no, I'm asking you. No, explain it. No, I'm not doing this. Thank you. You're not controlling you the conversation here, my bro. We have a normal conversation. I told you before, I like talking to you, but when we do this theatre, you know, I don't like this theatre. We can have a normal conversation, man to man, yep. trying to determine the truth. We don't have to do this theater thing. So, so when you said yeah. that Allah can't be compared to anything in his creation, yeah. and Abu Bakr said 
anything you think Allah is, yeah. Allah isn't. Yeah. So I want you to answer me this question. Sure. In the Quran, it says, Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth. The parable of his light, as it were, is as if there were a niche and within it a lamp and the lamp enclosed in glass and the glass, as it were, a brilliant star. What does the word glass and star mean in that verse? I'm going to have to look. To, I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to have to look. I'm going to have to read the tasfir. I know, I, I know of the verse, but I can't explain to you. Can you pull the tasfir up? Um, does anyone have, have the internet on my phone? Okay, so let's just go off your earlier statement. Your earlier statement was, what I can think of or imagine is not Allah. So, everything that I think of as glass as being is not Allah, agreed? Yeah, but are you seeming, so you know that verse that you just read? Yeah. Do you, do you, are you taking this verse literal, so that's a literal thing? So you think that Allah is literally glass or the star or is this a, a parable? So let, let, Allah says yeah, also the Quran, Allah it's a parable. Not, Allah also says in the Quran, he's not afraid to use parables. Yeah. He uses parables as a tool of communication. Yep. Because he has to speak in a language that we understand. Brilliant. But when Abu Bakr says anything that Allah is, uh, you think Allah is, is not. Yep. What he meant by that statement is that essentially you cannot grasp God. Anyone yep. would agree with that. Okay. So let, it, let us address well, did this you point. Understand what I, said? I understood what you said. Okay. So what we've got here is the brother has just said that Allah uses parables to communicate, which means that glass should mean something, star should mean something, that a blessed tree should mean something and an olive should mean something. So great. And it says that the Quran explains everything in detail. So I want to know when Allah in this parable is comparing himself, that's one of his attributes, light, to a glass, a niche, a star, a tree, an olive. What does an olive mean in this parable? Tell me. Because here's my contention to you. If, as you have said, and you have confirmed yeah. that Allah is not like anything in his creation, then these words are meaningless. And you just said that he uses parables to communicate. So this communication is meaningless. What is a parable? A parable yeah. is a picture metaphor that communicates the truth. Jesus used them all the time. So what's the problem with that? So the problem is, I'll do a comparison. When we compare Jesus' parables, he used parables all the time about himself. The unjust judge, for instance, is a parable telling us that we should be persistent in prayer like the widow that constantly barraged the uh, unjust judge. Because even though he didn't care about right and wrong, because she would not stop wearing him out, he granted her request. So one second, you, you asked me a question, I'm answering it. So Christ is using a parable to communicate a truth. So I'm asking you, what truth about Allah's light is communicated by comparing it to an olive? But that's not a parable. You didn't use a good example. It does say it. It well, says Jesus, it right. The parable of his light. That's what it says right there. Parable is, right, says a parable it. is something when you use an imagery or a symbolic imagery yes. to explain uh, a greater truth in, in the statement. So, for example, when Allah SWT says, uh, well, let me use parables, you know, that we use parables all the time, you know, yeah. because uh, rain and dogs and cats, right? That's, that's a parable. So a parable is not an unjust judge, but it's something where you use an imagery uh, or a symbol and then you combine it uh, to convey uh, something because language has its limits. So you have to use parables to explain uh, things that sometimes are very difficult to explain in plain language. Yeah. Uh, when Allah, whenever Allah says He's the light, to me that's very, very obvious. Allah is here saying that He is, uh, He is, um, uh, guidance is with Him. You know, truth is with Him because because light, light denotes uh, light denotes clarity. Light denotes uh, uh, safetyness because in darkness you don't know what you encounter. Darkness. Uh, light denotes. Someone help me. There's many things that light denotes, right? Okay, can I... Uh, I want to let you finish. Sure, sure, sure. So, yeah. here's the problem. You said that this is a bad example because it's not a parable. No, not this. One second. It literally says the parable of his light is as if there were a niche and within it a lamp. The lamp enclosed in glass. 
the glass as it were a brilliant star lit from a blessed tree an olive neither of the east nor the west so let me finish so it is a parable no not no no that's exactly what we're talking about one second and the parable compares Allah's light to an olive it says an olive so I want to know what is being communicated by the word olive especially in light of the fact that Abu Bakr says anything that you can think of as being Allah is not Allah so if I think of an olive I can't think of an olive about Allah but yet Allah is using an olive to describe himself um, just to correct you, I didn't mean that that wasn't a good parable. I, uh, I was meaning uh, the example they used as the unjust, uh, the, the unjust judge. That was a bad example. No, it's a parable. Okay, anyway. but uh, Literally says it's a parable. I, I, I think you're doing the same mistake you've done about two months ago when we had a conversation. Uh, we had, and it was about the chain of Allah and all these things that you were bringing up. Uh, it's, so basically, you're reading this text over there, the yeah. Quran in front of you. And you are sort of being very literal about it by saying, well, Allah is referring himself as the light. Allah is referring himself as the olive trees. Is that, is, is that being literal here? Is Allah literally the olive tree? No, of course not. He's not saying that he's olive trees, nor is he referring to any three-dimensional objects. He's Allah, using... I just want to say that the light here means the guidance. It's I've already said, that, this, already, already, said guides this, already said that to him. So, but, so he's trying to make something which is not... No, we, it's already recorded. We've said it already. We're just repeating. But what I'm trying to say is that, he's, uh, again here, it's, it's just using language to, di to point at something greater in meaning. Okay, so you, you haven't actually answered my question. Because I didn't ask about the light. I asked about the olive. I don't know. And and, and, the, what, know the and, 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 and that's that's the point. I don't know the symb so, symbolic so, significance. Let, let me finish. I, I, I listen to you. Let I'm me not finish. I'm finished. Okay. The, you, well, I, you stopped. I thought you were finished. No, no. You interrupted. What I'm trying well, to he say, interrupted actually. Well, that was before that. But what I'm trying to say the point I'm trying to make is first of all, and that's the reason why I didn't want to talk to you about it, because I don't know this verse well. So I can't talk about it. You've underlined it, done weeks of research, and you ambushed me in the sense. I can't I really. That's fair. Yeah. So that's exactly really, what happened. So I can't really uh, pay <laughs> justice to this conversation. But I can look into it. And Please then, come back next week. Yeah. But my point to you is this, right? If yeah. these words don't mean anything sure. that we can think of or imagine, then these words are meaningless. Which means that, which means that, if they don't have a point of reference that actually communicates something, yeah. then that means. That we're really, what we're reading is, Allah is the blower of the heavens and the earth, and the parable of his blower is as it were a blower, and within it a blower, the blower enclosed in blower, the blower as it were a brilliant blower, lit from a blower, uh, and a blower. A blower in English, just, it's just like a, a, like a blanket word, it, it doesn't mean anything, it means exactly what you want it to mean. I've never come up Yeah, it, it just, if I say blah blah, it yeah. means you're not saying anything. Or if I say blah blah, it means you can fill those words in with whatever you want. So the point that I'm making to you is that within Islamic theology, there's a fundamental contradiction. It asserts one thing, Allah is not like anything that he created, whilst uh, asserting another thing, that he has a light that is the parable of which is like a star, a lamp, a glass, an olive, a tree, and these things, you can't hold these two things in tension. These words have to mean something. Or, one second, or, or, you, so you either have to abandon the idea that these words can't mean what they reference, or you have to abandon the idea that this is clear guidance because it's using these words. Now, you used an Ashuri defense. This idea that the light, the light is a metaphor for something else. But right? is, it, is it? One second. But I, I mean, as I understand it, you do evangelism with Ali Dawa. Yeah, if I, Ali Dawa is a Salafi and he would assert that the light is a real thing, not a metaphor, not to be communicated as being something else, but simply something that we can't explain. That's the worst so which, which yeah. are you, Ashari or Salafi? Oh, I, I, I don't know, I don't know. I'm not like neither, to be honest. Fair enough. Yeah, but let me tell you something, right? Uh, does this verse actually say that it's a parable itself? Does it quote it? It literally says, the parable of his light. Well, that's the answer, though. <laughs> so, the answer. what does the what's the parable? What what does olive mean? What so, does tree mean? So, 
first of all, it says the parable, right? Yes, we, we, that's never been disputed. So what is the parable? <laughs> At no Light, point have I disputed that. <laughs> Lights, the stars. For example, very, something very interesting. The Arabs uh, used to uh, associate um, uh, loads of importance to the stars because they would use them to navigate through the deserts. Uh, and they would also like uh, superstitiously believe that the stars would yep. have an uh, impact yep. on... Uh, so. If we, we philosophize about that verse, it could also mean that uh, the stars do not influence the world, but it's the light, the goddess, influences the world. And it's, it's God who guides you through darkness. And look at this, very interesting. So the lamb, darkness, stars. So when do we see the stars? When it's dark, right? Yep. When there, there's no sun, they're yeah. deprived. So yeah. God is guidance when there's when you in, in, uh, uh, in uh, compasses um, or when you're uh, surrounded by darkness you know god in his message and his and, 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 and his revelation uh, represents guidance in darkness it could mean that as well so i need to re look at this verse but um uh, kudos to you. you you find quite interesting verses so i must say so so let's advance the argument my, my question is in the quran Sorry, in the hadith, in Sahih al-Muslim, al-Iman, um, hadith number 261, narrated by Abu Dhar, yeah. it states this. I asked the messenger, did you see your Lord? He replied, how could I see him? He is veiled in light. So my question is, is the light that veiled Allah created or uncreated? I don't know. I can't answer that question. Okay. I can't answer that question. I don't know. How? Let me let me ask you another question. Does this not suggest whether? Doesn't this suggest any in any way that we play it that either one attribute of Allah can restrict another attribute of Allah, or that something that Allah creates can restrict His attribute? I, I don't even understand what you're saying. To be let let me maybe, maybe if I maybe if I quote this one to you, Sunan Ibn Majah. Hadith number 195, yeah. the book of Sunnah, grade Sahih. Because yeah. I know you guys love Sahih. It states this, his veil, his veil, everybody know what a veil is? His veil is light. And if he were to remove it, the glory of his face would burn everything of his creation as far as his gaze reaches. So what I mean by one attribute or something restricting the other attributes. The face and the glory of Allah are his attributes. The gaze of Allah is his attribute. So the veil is restricting this glory. So, have we got here evidence of something either uncreated that belongs to Allah? Some, some, it is Sahih. It is Sahih. All you, that's, that's, that, that, the thing is, different scholars have different opinions about which hadiths to believe in. No, I'm not lying. It's Sahih. It's, it's Sahih. The, the thing, right, you, why you joke? No, it's, it is Sahih. The reality is, because different scholars, do different scholars, one second, one second. Do different scholars give different gradings to different hadiths? Yes, they do. Did you all hear that? Different scholars, give different grading to different hadiths. So he believes in his scholar, he believes in his scholar, and the two scholars may disagree about which... Bro, he already has said that they do that. Who says Sahih? Bro, bro, he's already given the fact. Thank you. So even if it's Hassan, which is his grading of his scholar. Ron, one second, one second. You can pull it up on the internet, I'll give you the reference. So the reality is that we've got a hadith that is talking about the attributes of Allah being restricted by something. Bro, I'll be honest with you, this is way above my weight. Hey, great. Yeah, I can't answer this. You need stuff. to ask Ali Dawa for a rise. I don't even think he, he, he can answer this, but I'm going to have to go in. Right? Okay, Thank it's you. very nice talking to you. Thanks. Have I given you a book? Uh, you have before, yeah, yeah. I would like to give you another book because I, I, there's a pleasant conversation and I like to have a pleasant conversation with people. So let, 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 let me give you... I'm going for a break after this, bro. Yeah. And when Allah says he is light, yeah. Allah's light means guidance. If Allah is light, you will be guided. Oh, what am I doing? That doesn't mean that light is Allah. That's exactly. Many places Allah says, huh? Allah will give the light in darkness for you to be guided. So he's just trying to make that light means Allah. No, it's his light, meaning it's his guidance. 
There you go. Oh, actually, let me get you a different book. Sorry. There you go. You look after yourself. That was a really pleasant conversation. Thank you very much. If you follow his light, you will be guided. And Allah is comparing his light with that particular light which comes from that lamp. In that lamp, there's oil come from a particular tree, which is an olive tree. It's talking about if you have that leaf, a, br a bright glass leaf with that particular oil, okay. and the light comes out of that in the darkness, how beautiful that light is. This is how Allah's light, which is guidance, is so beautiful that will guide you in your darknesses. So the light, the light this is what it means. Allah. It's all talking about Did that oil. That, in the back? that oil comes from that particular tree. That particular tree is an olive tree. Yeah. And in that niche, which is a beautiful glass, in that glass, when you light, you see that light in the darkness, the, how beautiful that light is. This is how Allah's light, which guide people in their darkness, this is how beautiful Allah's guidance is. That's what it all means. It doesn't mean that Allah is that light. You get, you get my point? No, Allah is not the light. The light in the is same, the guidance. I'll, I'll read you another verse. One second, uh, one second, because I'm actually going to go for a break. So, like, like, I've been talking all day, bro. That's fine. I've been I, talking all day. Yeah, so, yeah, 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 but he... Next yeah. time, maybe. So, so, yeah, maybe next time. Yeah. So, the, the, point that, the, the point that I've made, the point, what you should understand about our brother here, is that he's condemned by the other Muslims in the park as being a heretic. Really? Because he's a Mutasilite. I'm not. He believes in, a, in it. You, you believe that I, the Quran is created if, or eternal? I, I don't say Mutas, Mutasalaita are wrong in any way. I don't say Shias are wrong in any way. I don't we've say Sufis are wrong in any way. We've I got take, Mansour, I, we've got the others challenging no, 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 you on your beliefs. I'm a Muslim yeah. and I take wherever I find the truth. doesn't matter where it comes from. So yes. if I'm Mutasalait say something right, I agree with Mutasalait on yeah. that. Do you believe this Quran was created? I, I believe the word of Allah is uncreated, but there's a time and space when the Quran was uh, recited. Because Quran means the recital. So whenever it was recited, that's the beginning. So I said Quran so, has a beginning. So these words are created. Quran has a beginning. So these Quran, words are created. Sorry? These words are created. You know, you don't understand what I'm saying. There was a time and place when the Quran was recited because the Quran means something to be recited. Yeah. So that's why I say Quran has a beginning. That's why I say. Well, is this created? If something has beginning, what, what do you of mean course. By created? Because I when, seen it had a beginning. When Allah, when Allah spoke, actually you're changing the topic yeah. right now. Well, because you, 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 you jumped into a conversation and I'm well, going on a break. He just invited me. Yeah, well, that, well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to stop, bro, because no problem, I've been talking no since whatever anytime, time I arrived. Anytime, I'm going to go for a break. Anytime, no problem, we'll talk again. No problem. Okay. Yeah, let's do a quick wrap up. So we spoke about a surah in the Quran and hadiths that are sahih. And those, this surah in the Quran, talks about Allah's light and it gives a parable that compares an attribute of Allah to things that are created such as, such as a lamp, a star, a tree, an olive but Muslims believe that nothing that you can think of about Allah is Allah so therefore these words can't mean what you imagine them to mean which means that they don't mean anything at all but the Quran says that it's clear guidance. We also read a hadith that says that Allah, Allah's attributes were restricted by something that he has either created or by another one of his attributes, the veil of Allah, the light of Allah, that restricts the glory of his face. Well, if Muslims have that belief that the glory of Allah can be restricted, then what objection can they have to Christians who believe that the divinity of Christ restricted the was restricted in him taking on flesh?